from Reno, Nevada, it's time for Ice Raiders Hockey. A very pleasant good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be. I'm Philip Goodman. Well, it's been 41 days since the Ice Raiders left Breckenridge with a pair of defeats, a ton of penalties, and some bruised knuckles. Has time healed all wounds? Or did that January weekend sow seeds of hatred for years to come? Let's see what happens tonight. It's the Ice Raiders and the Breckenridge Vipers round three. This weekend's games are brought to you by TNT Yard Service. TNT Yard Service is a full service lawn maintenance company that has been servicing the Reno area for over 20 years. TNT can do more than just mow and trim your yard. Call TNT Yard Service for irrigation, cleanup of leaves, and debris, shrub trimming, and aeration. Hockey players sharpen their blades every day. So does TNT Yard Service. TNTYardService.com. Hard to believe that February is almost over and there's only 10 games remaining at home and oh boy are the Ice Raiders happy to finish this season at home. The boys unfortunately 0 and 8 on the road this season but 9 and 1 at home. After the FDNY weekend series two weekends ago, the Ice Raiders fell short. Justice, uh, excuse, yes, Justice Chiori played great on all accounts. The offense unable to stop Nick Battaglia and the FDNY company. Breckenridge comes in on a two-game losing streak after dropping a pair to the Mansfield Barracudas in Breck. Overall, the Vipers are 4-4 four and four at home, 1-3 and three on the road for a sub-500, 5-7 record. Who's in, who's out is brought to you by Opening Solutions, LLC. You can't get in or out of the rink without good commercial doors. Opening Solutions, LLC has all of your commercial and residential door solutions. Reno Ice General Manager Kevin Sundy puts on the familiar black and gray. He's put up multi-point games for Reno in the past. He's great on the draws. He can finish. He can set up. He will be paired with Bobby Watson and Mickey Lang. Jesse Vanisky, he played in Breckenridge, and now he is back here in Reno for the rematch. Pavel Pustovoy makes his return for some offensive firepower. Jake Minton continues to skate well on the Triple J line with his old pal John Garrity and Julian Herrera. And Bobby Watson. We haven't seen Bobby Watson in a while. He has been on the road with Reno. He will be on that line with Kevin Sunday and Lang. Out, still out. Matt Robinson, long-term injured reserve, upper body injury. Dana Navratil was cleared to play, but he did not make the roster tonight. Ramsey Anderson is dealing with some personal matters. He's fine, all well, all good, just unavailable this weekend. He will be back for the last six games of the season. Time now for your key Acura of Reno, three keys to the game. Hand delivered by Coach Tim Tukey himself. Number one, quick start, try to take the life out of the Breckenridge Vipers. Remember, Breckenridge is nearly twice the elevation of Reno, so the Breckenridge guys coming down here they're going to have the gas in their tanks, so Reno's got to take that life out of them. Big hits, big goals, big shots. Move our feet. Good tape-to-tape -tape passes. I guess that's kind of like a 2A, 2B thing there from Tim Tukey. And here's a new one that I haven't seen. I had to have Coach Tukey unpack this one. Four-check hard, bump their defense to open up the neutral zone. So if we can get in on their defense, even on a chip and, a ch uh, chip and chase, and make contact with their defenders, Maybe that'll back off their D, so it'll open up the neutral zone for some crisscrossing and uh, more slot opportunities. Your three keys to the game brought to you by Key Acura of Reno. Before the Ice Raiders and Vipers take the ice in just a moment, please rock that thumbs up button and bang that subscribe bell. We're hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers before the end of the season. So if it is your first Ice Raiders cast, please subscribe to our channel now and get alerts when we go live for future games, and also when our amazing technical director, Jim Dunnigan, uploads the highlights for this weekend's games. And now, here is Chris Payne with tonight's introductions.
Welcome to the ice, your Reno Ice Raiders Hockey Gentlemen, and welcome to Jennifer M. O'Neill Community Ice Arena for tonight's matchup with the visiting Breckenridge Vipers and your Real Ice Raiders Hockey Club, presented by TNT Yard Service. At this time, we'd like to introduce tonight's starting lineup, starting with the visiting Breckenridge Vipers. Head coach, Rich Battenberg. On defense, number four, Cody Wilson. And defense, number 77, Dan Oenry. And forward, number 42, Garrett Bailey. And center, number 74, Rick Battenberg. And forward, number 79, Michael Houlihan. And in goal, number 35, J.R. Engelberg. And now, your Reno Ice Raiders Hockey Club. Starting with equipment manager, Jeff Senford. Head trainer, Jay Seeley. <laughs> Assistant coach, Scott Peterson. <laughs> Assistant coach, James Debbie. <laughs> and head coach, Tim Tukey. <laughs> your starting lineup with your captain, number 19, Andrew Peterson. <laughs> On defense, number 13, Alex Gano. And forward, number 21, Kevin Sundy. At center, number four, red hot, Bobby Watson. At forward, lucky number seven, Nikki Lang. And your netminder. Make some noise for number one, Justin Sand. Fans, at this time, we ask those who are able to please rise and remove your caps for tonight's national anthem, performed by lead singer of Sugar High, Kathy Lang.
Kathy Lance never disappoints. Follow Kathy Lance and Sugar High on Facebook if you live in Reno and go check them out live. Only fitting that this weekend's games are brought to you by TNT Yard Service because there are going to be some fireworks tonight. Oh, one more. What's up, Ryan Doppel? Good to be back. I'm Philip Goodman. Chris Payne is our public address announcer. Our technical director is Jim Dunnigan. Tom Jekyll, good to see you up there, buddy, doing our stats. There are going to be fireworks tonight. A ton of penalties in Breckenridge. The series ended with Tony Tyrell dropping the mitts with J.R. Engelbert, the goalie in net. To my right, your left for the Breckenridge Vipers. Not sure what the conversation is with official Trevor Jarvis. Oh, it's a friendly one. They're shaking hands. Head coach Rich Battenberg, father of centerman Rick Battenberg. The officials for tonight, Trevor Jarvis, David Horton's about to drop the puck, Robert Purdy, and Kevin Slattery on the line. Tonight's game brought to you by TNT Yard Services underway. And the Vipers have it for first possession. They get it into the neutral zone, swat it into Reno Zen. Uh, Clearing attempt, bounces off players, and then Petey nearly puts it into his own bench. It goes right off the lip of the boards, rim of the boards, I should say. And now it comes around for Lang. Nice soft touch for Bobby Watson. Watson can't get around the Vipers D. He gets shoved to the ice, and it goes into the corner. Now around for Gano, it gets past Gano, and on it is Mitch Bailey. Bailey into the corner, he's got some help in the middle, and the pass was out of the reach of Michael Houlihan, I think. The back-checking Reno defenseman might have got a stick on that. Wholesale changes for both teams. 45 seconds in, no shots on goal. Big thanks to all you folks in Breckenridge, Colorado. An hour ahead, tuning in to give us a watch and a listen. Puck goes around the net. Bodies collide. That's Garrity, I believe, uh, beg your pardon, sign number two. And Breckenridge will ice it. A minute eight gone by, first period, and Chris Payne is already firing everyone up with some rage against the machine. Will there be a parade to the penalty box in this game? Hopefully not, even Coach Battenberg told me and allowed me to quote him saying, hopefully everybody behaves. Weston Nash, he throws it on net, and it might have gone off bodies into the corner. Breckenridge is able to clear. It's in the feet of Jesse Vaniski wearing number 72. Kevin Sundy is wearing number 21 tonight. Nash did not gain the red line and his entry pass misses. That will go for icing. Everybody's looking fabulous in the ring tonight. So good to see everyone. Face off to the right of Justin Sand in net tonight for the Reno Ice Raiders. Puck is won back by the Vipers along the blue line barely held in, thrown towards the net just to keep the zone, not really a shot on goal. Cycling it are the Vipers and it's taken away by Choo Choo LeBlue. Simon LeBlue charging up the right wing, tries to get a shot on goal and it deflected off a body. Simon throws one of the Vipers down in the corner. They get it in front. And Simon couldn't pull the trigger. And then Simon misses with the big shoulder. Uh, reverse play misses, held in. No, not held in. It bounced past Tyrell as 
the larger linesman, Robert Purdy, was skating right in front of me as it bounced past Gano. Feathered into the corner, chasing after it is Johnny Hockey, who puts a hit. Oh, and that's a big, clean hit by Garrity. It was the Viper who tried to reverse it and then took the brunt of the impact into the boards. That might be one of your first Sierra Sid's paint jobs of the night. 25 at 1736. Long outlet pass goes off the boards and just misses Jake Minton wearing number 12. And the puck comes back to uh, Alex Gano. Gano wearing the full cage on the white bucket. Why am I not remembering Gano wearing a full cage before? Thought he was wearing a half shield. So with the white buckets and different masks, I got to recognize faces again. It's been a few weeks. Into the corner, Foggergren on the forecheck, trying to fish it out, get some help. Foggergren gets it back to Gano at the right point. His wrist shot, block safe, rebound, and unable to pull it. Skate to stick was Pustavoy wearing number 97. And a shot from the left side is saved by Engelbert. And Julian Herrera, who I didn't see in the locker room, haven't got a high or a handshake from him yet. He skates away peacefully. Watching those games in Breckenridge, the Vipers got under his skin. And he threw hands a couple of times. Does the elevation thing really work in favor? Opposite is going up as higher elevation. Uh, I'll answer that in a moment. Let's see what the Ice Raiders do in the offensive zone here. Gano holds the zone. And we have a delayed penalty behind the play. Thank you, Jacob Fillion, for catching that. It will be on the Ice Raiders. Uh, I'm totally speculating here. It's a hold. I thought it might be a slash. Holding is the call at 16.34 see if Jim picked it up on the replay. He's going to the box. Roger Hutchison, two minutes for a holding. Wait, no? Oh, now he is going to go. Sorry, Hutchison tried to go to the bench. Uh, actually, a lot of... Uh, Olympic athletes will train in Denver because at the high elevation, it does stuff to your oxygen levels. I'll ask my pulmonary expert to my left in uh, maybe at the intermission. And so when they get down to sea level, they've got stamina for days. I know it works because when I worked in Denver for four weeks, I uh, rode the bike and exercised, and then I got back to Valencia and I could ride my bike 30 miles, barely breaking a sweat. It's a... Peterson Wealth Management penalty kill for the Ice Raiders who take it away on the first zone entry attempt and kill 35 seconds of Viper power play time. Vipers get it in the zone and then a shot is gloved easily. And that seemed to be for a face off on purpose to change lines and maybe set something up off of the face off. Shot might have been going wide. In fact, it was watching the replay. Sand sliding out to his left on the glove side. Face off is won by Breck from behind the net. Thrown in front, nearly caromed in off a skate and past the leg pad of Sand. Played along the half wall now below the goal line. Back to the middle, a shot scores. That might have gone over the leg pad and under the glove. It's a power play goal for Breckenridge, who take a 1-0 lead. Puck comes off the left half wall and into the left circle where there was nobody there for an ice raider and hits that right post. The visitors strike first at 15.34. Exactly one minute into the penalty kill. Michael Houlihan with the goal assisted by Garrett Bailey. Vipers on the attack again. Ice Raiders having trouble getting out of their own zone and now they do. Alex Gano avoids the hip check and gets it into the corner, goes after it himself. Comes around the right side. And Gano all over the ice. 
Held in right point by Garrity. Uh, yes, that is Johnny Garrity, I beg your pardon, on coming down the middle. Now he gets it right back. A chance save made by Engelbert. And he covers it with the glove on his left leg. Face off to the right of Engelbert. Johnny Garrity will take the draw against Luke Noble. And Garrity pulls it to the half wall. Now back up to uh, the left point for a shot by Geron. That missed wide. Weston Nash doing battle. Taken away by Breckenridge. Nash gets it back to Geron. Geron had his, actually no, not Geron's stick. I beg your pardon. They're able to get it up ahead for Garrity. Garrity into the middle. And no opportunity there for the Ice Raiders. It was hard to tell if Herrera did get a stick on that. Now Jake Minton wearing number 12. Gets it behind the net for Garrity. Comes around the board. Geron pastes a Viper into the board. And then a nice hit by Minton. Minton takes another cross check for his efforts. And there's going to be a penalty. Jarvis is going to call that. It was a clean hit by Minton. Sand doesn't see it. They're yelling for Sand to get out of the out of the net. Peterson gets stepped into. I beg your pardon, Herrera does. And he has a smile for Garrett Bailey. I believe Jarvis is going to call that cross check for that extra against Minton. Cross check is indeed the penalty. 13. 13. Eli Kendall going to box for the cross check at 13.48. It's a Brewers cabinet power play for the Ice Raiders and the Vipers send it in on sand. Reno has to regroup. Mickey Lang enters his own, charging the crease was Bobby Watson, but the pass did not connect and the Vipers clear. Andrew Peterson, outlet for Sunday. Sunday across the line, sets up at the half wall, drop pass for Watson. Watson takes it down low, back up high for Peterson. Peterson fakes a slapper. Now cross ice for Gano. Gano top of the left circle, surveys, down low for Lang. Lang back up high for Peterson. It's crossed up in his feet, gets it back right side. And Vipers cannot clear. Getting shoved around is Sunday, and it's wrapped up in the feet of the linesman. Puck is loose along the half wall. Vipers are able to take it away and skate it up through the neutral zone. Mitch Bailey has a shot on net, steered away by Sand, and then a collision in the corner sends an ice raider into the boards. That was Gano that went down. Bobby Watson, one on four. He'll float it into the middle looking for Lang, but it's knocked away by the good defense of Breckenridge. Watson tries to get it back to the middle. He fanned on, half fanned on his pass, and the Vipers cannot clear. Watson's still out there, he's got it. Left corner, now back to the left point for Peterson. Peterson walks the line, surveys. Right side for Lang. Lang, bottom of the right circle, it's loose! They score! The loose change was right there for Mickey Lang. It's a Brewers cabinet power play goal, and Reno ties it. The shot comes from the right circle. Engelbert thought he had it, but no, I beg your pardon, that was not Lang, that was Jake Minton depositing the loose change. One one your score, both power play goals. Jake Minton with the goal, assisted by Mickey Lang and Andrew Peterson. And that goal song brought to you by Taste of Chicago. Hello everyone on Moana Lane, enjoying deep dish pizzas and Chicago beef dips at Taste of Chicago. Thanks for putting the game on. 
tonight. Oh, intercepted pass, Pablo Pusavoy, right circle. Can't get the shot away. And now they do get a shot, but it goes high and wide. Reno still on the attack. They've got it in the crease, and it's poked away by Engelbrecht. Now Barber sends a shot on net with traffic. Rebounds is taken away from Pustavoy, who would have had a clean look. And that should be interference, because Pustavoy didn't have the puck, and he got knocked over. Unless he touched it last, and I missed that through the melee of Adis. Vipers, left wing, trying a centering pass. It goes into the corner. Picked up by Barba. Barba will gain the blue line. He'll get a shot on net. Block, actually, no, not on net. It was blocked by the body of Cody Wilson. Barba's coming back for a change on the play. And the puck comes right to Weston Nash, fresh off the bench. Nine and a half, almost nine and a half gone by. First period, one, one your score. Here is Pustavoy. Pustavoy gets leveled, but he got the puck in deep. Ice, uh, Ice Raiders reverse it. But it's cleared out by Breckenridge. Jerron ahead for Hutchison. Hutchison one on two, lines, fires. And it might have gone off the skate of one of the Vipers. And now Weston Nash, his shot blocked. And that stung the Viper that went down to block it. That's Mitch, ba Mitch Bailey that took the stinger. And now Engelbrecht will hang on. Roger Hutchison is out there, and he's having conversations. I asked Hutch before the game if he had anyone prearranged pre on his dance card. And he said, everyone, no one is safe. Chris Payne. It looked like when Barber was coming off the ice, he had a little wince on his face, so he might be in a bit of pain. I did notice that as well, and uh, I was hoping it was just exhaustion from a hard shift. We will keep an eye on Adam Barba, good eye, Chris Payne. Mickey Lang sends it in front. Where is it? Loose puck is pounced on by Engelbert. Nearly halfway through this first period, a 1-1 score. Face off is, oh, I kind of lost what happened there. Now it's uh, up at the blue line. I'm down here in the box for you Breck people if it's your first time logging on. I am not on an elevated perch like uh, your guys were on a scissor lift in Breckenridge. This will go on net. And so no icing here. Engelbert will have to make the stop. Vipers get it across the Reno blue line. Making a move is Garrett Bailey. They get it down in front, and a shot was disrupted by the good active stick of the Reno defense. Weston Nash looking to get around three black jerseys and cannot. He turns it over. Cross corner dump by Breckenridge. They'll change behind the play. At least the defense will after the dump. Weston Nash sends it around for Sign. Gano gives it back to Nash for Watson. Watson sidesteps a hit. He nearly got creamed, and Watson's going to go to the bench for a change. Pass was sort of behind Sign. And Reno will regroup in their own zone. Up ice pressure by Eli Kendall. And that forces a Reno turnover. They had a man in front charging down the slot was Jake Bernstein. But the pass misses, comes all the way out to Engelbert. Beg your pardon, Engelbert. Throwing the body, choo-choo the blue. If you're going to step on the tracks, keep your head up. I, uh, Vipers turn it over now to LeBleu. Into the corner for Vinisky. Vinisky back for sign. Pass was too hard to handle. And pinching and holding the zone was Gano, but it goes right to a Viper stick. And it's launched into the ceiling. So that will be a face off to the right of Engelberg. Have you heard the mashup on YouTube of Hip to Be Square and Enter Sandman? I have not, but now you've piqued my interest. P-I-Q-U-E-D, Pete. Indeed, it's a really good mashup. 
the things they can do with the technology these days, and it, it all met, blends perfectly. It's so good. I've listened to it like a thousand times. Oh, and then there's a, you make me feel like dancing. And Shoshana, and Shoshana just yelled sad but true. That's the other mashup, Chris Payne, you have to listen to. Sad but true when you make me feel like dancing. When you guys are, uh, when we're done with our commercials at intermission on YouTube, you guys should look that one up. Glove saved by Sandy, dropped it, so he'll kick it into the corner. As the team's jockeying for position, nothing happened. And Tony Tyrell going up ice with Julian Herrera. Watch out for Tyrell crashing the net. Here's Herrera with Tyrell, a backhander, and it goes wide. Oh, I asked Tony, are you going to be the screen man on the power plays? Let's see what happens. And this one's batted out of midair by the Vipers. This will go all the way for icing. Tony Tyrell jumping up on the offense. Zeppelin and Wu-Tang, I'll look up that one. Seven plus to go, first period, 1-1. One, one. Much tighter contest so far than what Breckenridge did to Reno 41 days ago in Breck. Foggergren wins the draw to Nash. Nash, your shot goes off a skate and wakes up the people in the corner. Over to get it is Garrett Bailey. Bailey will drop it back for his defense. And slowly but surely, the Vipers get it in deep and will go for a change. Sand will play it up ahead for Pustavoy, who gets the wheels moving, gets around the Viper player in the neutral zone, carries it in deep to the right wing. Sends it around the boards for Nathan Hogue, his first shift on the ice. Hogue can't get it into the corner. Over to help out is Pustavoy. Pustavoy gets it back, left point. He's got no pressure. He's got time to think about it. He'll flip it into the corner for Foggergrin. Foggergrin does battle in the corner, trying to use his wide frame to shield the puck with his body. Dug out, Nathan Hogue from behind the net gets it back for Pustavoy, whose shot is kicked away by Engelbert. And Bailey looks around for help. Vipers get it into the zone. They've got it left circle. And then Bailey's one-time try goes off the glass behind the net. Pustavoy can't find the loose puck along the wall. Now it is played up to the blue line, but not out by Giron. A centering pass blocked down by the Reno defense. And again, taken away by Reno. Losing side of it was Pustavoy. Vipers try to send it on net. Bouncing puck is gonna be onside. Oh, and Breckenridge can't believe it. Doesn't matter though, because Pustavoy couldn't corral the puck. It was just a half a mile an hour behind him. Otherwise, he's got a good look held in by Peterson at the right point. Well, all the linesmen wearing black and red deemed that play to be offside, but it is irrelevant now. Just over five minutes to go, first period. Kind of quiet, kind of tense for how packed this building is right now as the teams are Skating to an even tilt so far. Taken away by the Vipers on the zone entry attempt by Reno. And now Gano. Gano gets it ahead for Lang, but this one's offside. Oh, Mickey's upset about that one. Jim, do we got a replay on Mickey's feet on where he was on the blue line? Yeah, he was turning around. That's a tough one. That's a bang bang play for everybody. <laughs> Jacob, just for you, we better get another goal if I'm gonna say that. Thanks for logging on, Jacob, appreciate you, bud. Chicago top shelf in the house. Dumped in by Mickey Lang, taken by Engelbert. And this will be icing against Breckenridge. CMP, CMK Pro Media, thanks. Yeah, it's a brand new barn just opened in 2020. Still in very good shape and hoping to add that second sheet soon. Four and a half to go, first period. Tonight's game brought to you by TNT Yard Service. And Purdy, the linesman, is the one motioning to uh, kick out the Viper centerman, but the Vipers still win the draw with the replacement centerman whose number I didn't catch. Held in by Vinisky. Peterson swats it down low 
Right side for LeBlu, looking for a give and go. Puck is loose right in the slot, but the gray jerseys couldn't get a stick on it. Gano is able to hold the zone. Gano walks it down Broadway, and his shot hits the glass. Puck sitting on the goal line. Into the corner for Vineski. Left point for Peterson. He sends it on net. Deflected just wide. That might have gone off an Ice Raider stick. Played up the boards, but not out. The uh, Vipers think it through, gain the red, and now they'll dump and change behind the play. Sand will stop the puck behind his net. He'll get it up to the half wall, but it's taken away by Reno. Peterson, flat-footed, darts to take it for a skate. Oh, man, could have given it right to that Viper. And then there's a hip check taken Herrera off of the puck. Mitch Bailey with the clean hit on Herrera. Dumped in from the red line by Cody Wilson. Picked up by Adam Barba, who's no worse for wear. His cross ice outlet stolen by Breckenridge. Hard bounce off the boards. Comes right to Johnny Garrity. Garrity gets the wheels moving. He carries it on the right circle. His toe drag move and quick shot. Saved by Engelbert. And now Johnny Garrity throws a body into the Viper captain of Battenberg, who goes back after Garrity, puts a slash on him. Garrity slashes back, and none of the orange arms are up. So the temperature increasing here with the sticks. Tony Tyrell forces a Viper into the corner. It goes off of Barba, and a shot goes wide. Barba lost sight of the puck when it hit his skate. Now the Viper's looking for a one-timer back door. That was Garrett Bailey with the chance. And now players coming together again. Puck goes over to the net. And it's cleared out by Reno. Back to the left point. A shot got blocked and goes into the corner. Roger Hutchison finds the loose puck. He'll play it off the glass, but not out. Held in at the blue line for Rister. It's loose underneath Sand, and he sits on it in the crease. Sand lost sight of it. It was underneath him. He could probably feel it. And fortunately, that did not hatch a goal. Two minutes to go, first period. Face off one by Reno in the defensive zone, Weston Nash. Try to get it up the boards, hit a Viper body, comes right back to him. Lifted for Watson. Watson throws his shoulder in one of the Vipers coming at him. And now they do take it away and get a shot. Sand squeezes the pillows on that one. Face off to the right of Sand. Luke Noble taking the draw against Hutch. Noble wins the draw. Uh, shot goes off of Minton. I beg your pardon, Sunday. And lands in the rink and the Vipers still possess. Puck goes through the goal mouth. Now comes up for Sunday. He can't get it out. This goes off of Watson. Lands at the feet of Nash. Nash gives it right back to the Vipers in the neutral zone. Dumped in on sand. He gloves it and drops it for Nash. Nash, uh, suicide pass nearly for Bobby Watson who was looking up and back at the same time and got out of the way of the hit. Now Watson has it on the touch. Watson drops it for Lang. Lang back for Watson. They get it in front for a chance and it's underneath Engelbert. All the gray jerseys crash in the crease and Engelbert comes up big. So the Lang line comes off empty handed. Choo Choo LeBlue, Jesse Vineski, and Hunter Sign come in for Reno. Peterson and Gano on the blue line. Face off splits the D, and Peterson will go track it down. One minute left in the period. Entering the zone is Simon LeBlue. He gets it to Sign. 
Sign from below the goal line. Gets it over to Gano. Gano, right circle. He shot angle. Scores! Alex Gano, he scores! 2-1, Reno! Gano from a sharp angle got it upstairs. What a corner pick by Alex Gano. Hunter sign and Choo Choo the Blue with the help helpers. 43 seconds left in the period and Reno takes a 2-1 lead. And nearly getting another one. The Ice Raiders come right back. Jake Minton off the end boards, and it goes underneath Engelbert right there. Was Johnny Garrity, but Engelbert had, a, Engelbert had to scoop that up. Minton gets it up ahead for, or back to the point for Gano. It bounces past him. Nice play by the Vipers to get it through the feet of the Ice Raiders and get it in deep, but Reno takes it right back. And Garrity with another hit on Battenberg. Battenberg with another slash on Garrity. Keep an eye on those two. A uh, chance for the Vipers, and then getting taken out on the play was Dan Onry. Puck comes out of the zone, and with only five seconds to go in the period, the Vipers will lick their wounds and go to the locker room, trailing two to one. The Vipers jumped out to the one nothing lead at 15.34. On the goal by Michael Houlihan, Reno responded three minutes later on their own power play goal. Jake Minton breaking the ice on Engelbert. And then Alex Gano with a beauty of a snipe from a sharp angle. That's a hard shot. The righty on the bottom of the right circle going upstairs, picking a corner on the big goalie. I did, I did, Jacob. I said it first I said he scores, and then I did <coughs> the scars. It just took me a second. I had to remember. That's a little out of my wheelhouse. Well, while I got you here, let's do the NHL update brought to you by Taste of Chicago. Only three games on the schedule tonight for the NHL. Tomorrow's the big night. Big thanks to Taste of Chicago for hosting the watch party at their place tonight. Let's see, the Sabres beat the Blue Jackets two to one. The Jets needed overtime to beat the Blackhawks, 3-2. And late in the third, the Wild with a 4-2 lead over to the Oilers. All you Pacific Division fans, most of you, Kings fans like myself and the Vegas Knights fans, happy to see the Oilers going back to their losing ways. That NHL update brought to you by Taste of Chicago. Take advantage of their food and drink specials for Reno Ice Raiders fans. Follow them on Facebook to see what their weekly special is. And look who's riding the Zamboni tonight. It is Anne-Marie Vogadez, the Miss Nevada, Miss Reno Rodeo, Nevada Rodeo. I'll get her name right, my bad. Here's Chris Payne with some important messages for your intermission. Get a free evaluation for your healthcare organization online at cure-us.com. If you're looking to add an edge to your hockey game, check out Battleborn Hockey School online at battlebornhs.com. Battleborn Hockey School features Reno Ice Raiders players as coaches for adults-only camps and implements on-ice clinics, a power skating clinic, and chalk talk to make you a more complete player for all age groups. Registration for hockey school dates opens soon for, in, for schools in Reno, Utah, and California. That's BattlebornHS.com. BJ's Nevada Barbecue Company, winner of the 2022 Best in the West Nugget Rib Cook-Off, is located at 80 East Victorian Avenue in Sparks. 
They've been family owned and operated for the past 37 years, serving award-winning ribs, smoked brisket, chicken, and pulled pork, all kissed with award-winning barbecue sauces. Check out their tri-tip menu on Tuesdays, beef ribs on Wednesdays, their throwback Thursday menu, as well as their fish fry on Fridays, and Saturday is their signature Cajun boil. For catering information and more, visit them online at bjsbbq.com. Maxwell's Barbershop provides expert haircuts, precise beard trims, and close straight razor shaves, all at fair prices. Maxwell's Barbershop is open by appointment only, Tuesday through Saturday. No frills, no BS, just good old school barbering. Maxwell's Barbershop, on 2nd Street, east of downtown Reno, near Wells, and online at maxwellsreno.com. Sierra Sid's Casino in Sparks has been family owned and operated since operator Sid Doan Jr. opened the doors in 1972. Check out the Atomic Bootlegger Lounge at Sierra Sid's for delicious craft brews and tasty cocktails all in a comfortable environment. Sierra Sid's is open 24-7, 365 for your gaming pleasure with payouts, some of the highest in Northern Nevada. Join the fun online at sierrasidscasino.com. And tonight's title sponsor is TNT Yard Service. They are a full-service lawn maintenance company that has been serving Northern Nevada for over 20 years. TNT can do more than just mow and trim your yard. Call TNT Yard Service for irrigation, cleanup of leaves and debris, shrub trimming and aeration. Hockey players sharpen their blades every day. So does TNT Yard Service. Find them online at tntyardservice.com. Fans, stick around. We have an intermission skater coming your way in a matter of moments. some extra help around the restaurant, so we hired some new staff. It's going good. Hey, Maddie, give me two pucks, a side of sticks, and a cold one. Make it fast. Coming right up. Hey, can we get the baseball game on? No. It'd be a lot easier if you just drop the gloves. Oh, you want to go, buddy? I'm gonna need a Zamboni. Hey, can I get a water? Hey, 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 no, 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 here you go, my man. I guess just like our beer, hockey is better on ice. Battleborn Hockey School is back. The West premier hockey camp for adults and kids. We're thrilled to announce the return of one of our most popular camps, Battleborn Hockey School's Power Skating Camp. This two-day program, designed for both adults and kids, is dedicated to enhancing your skating skills. From explosive starts to agile maneuvers, it's the perfect opportunity to gain the edge you've been seeking. And that's not all. We've added a new camp for 2024, Battleborn's Shooters and Scorers Camp. It's all about honing your finishing and goal scoring skills while elevating your hockey IQ. Whether you're a sharpshooter up front or a blue liner eyeing the net, this camp is your ticket to becoming an unstoppable scoring threat. For those that want the complete experience, our three-day Battleborn Adult Camp is for you. Geared for all levels, you'll undergo an intensive hockey skills improvement program led by coaches with over 100 years of combined professional and semi-pro hockey experience, covering everything from skating, 
shooting, positional awareness, in-game strategy, and tactics, you'll leave with a solid grasp of fundamental concepts and skills, enhancing your effectiveness as a hockey player. Engage in thoughtfully curated drills and exercises alongside your fellow campers, and just for our adult camp, a complimentary happy hour each day, providing an opportunity to connect with your coaches, teammates, and new friends. Every Battleborn Hockey School camp experience includes a personalized jersey, a detailed report card to track your progress, off-ice mobility sessions, and video analysis of your shot or stride depending on your camp. Ready to elevate your hockey game? Find our camps in California, Nevada, and Utah. Visit BattlebornHockeySchool.com to subscribe to our email newsletter for more details.
that we have a very special performance we would like to share with you this evening. Please welcome to Reno Igus, Easton Smokolski. Easton, an eight-year-old from Truckee, California, began her experience on the ice as a hockey player when she was only two years old. On frosty winter days, Easton first learned to stick handle, pass, and shoot pucks on the tiny outdoor ice rink at the regional park near her home in Truckee, California. Two years ago, Easton was introduced to figure skating here at Reno Ice and fell in love with both its athleticism and artistry. She now trains daily on and off the ice and is a competitive skater with U.S. figure skating. We hope you enjoy Easton skating to Survivor.
Joining me now for our first period, second period interview, Roger Hutchison. 2-1 score for the first period. You like what you saw out of your boys? Oh, yeah, we're all right. We got to finish. We'll keep going. We got to what? We'll just keep going. We're all right. Pretty disciplined so far. Haven't seen uh, all the fireworks yet. A couple of sticks came up, though. Uh, yeah, we just got to stay out of the box. That's what I was told, so. All right, here we go. Second period. Go get him. I was looking for Peterson, and Roger was the closest, so he had to take what you can get sometimes. Roger's focused. Usually he's a little more vo vocal. Intermission interview brought to you by The Nest, purveyors of vintage clothing. Furniture, decor, and more. Go check out The Nest, 201 Keystone Ave in Reno for local, iconic, and sustainable items for your home and wardrobe, like this amazing jacket and tie that I found that magically fits me. Five-on-five five skating for the second period. Teams trade sides. Two one, a power play goal and an even strength goal for Reno. Bobby Watson tries to spin it back to the point. It comes up high for Gano. Gano for Lang. Lang and Gano trade places. Lang will drop it back for Peterson. Peterson down low for Gano. Gano from behind the net. Centering pass got blocked. And the Ice Raiders get it right back. Watson on the cycle. Watson for Lang, whose one timer is saved. Rebound. Might have slid underneath. Kevin Sundy and into the corner. Ice Raiders still on the attack. Peterson deflects off a stick and it's gloved by Engelbert for a whistle. Jacob, I'm telling you, I said it after, but I'll do it again, though, just for you. When we get the next goal, hopefully. Face off to the right of Engelbert. And, uh, oh, Purdy is saying kick them both out. Both Vinisky and whoever else on the other side of Vinisky, whose number I cannot see, is being told to, are being told to exit the box. I beg your pardon, face off circle. Nope, they're gonna let him stay, says Kevin Slattery. And the Vipers have it off the drop. They get it up the half wall and out of the zone. Barba sends it right back into the neutral zone from his blue line. The Vipers will work it in deep. After it is Tyrell. Tyrell collides with a Viper and they jostle in the corner. Helping out is Vinisky, and then Barba throwing the body around. Still battled for, and finally dug out by Reno. Simon LeBlue, nice move to get around one of the Vipers, but over to help out. A man in a black jersey up the right wing boards. Reno carries it around. Now back up to LeBlue, his wrister deflects away. Picked up by Breck. And sauced out of the zone. A uh, hard whack. Nearly on Tyrell stick. That misses. Mike Ivory looking to break that up. Will this be icing? No, it will not be. Breckenridge beats it out. From behind the net. Breckenridge trying to take it away from Reno. And Nash having trouble. Has it taken from him? Back to the right point, but they can't hold it. It's fanned on by David Cottrell. Flipped up high. Weston Nash had it at the blue line, but it's poked away from him. Two plus minutes into the period. And Reno turns it over in their own zone. And being ridden hard into the corner was a Viper. That will be a penalty against Reno, probably a boarding. The referee is in the corner. Yeah, that's a bit of a shove with the man in his back to you. And he went head first into the boards. Roughing is the call against Jake Minton. So not a board, all rough. 
Second brew, uh, Peterson Wealth Management penalty kill for the Ice Raiders. And Reno cannot clear, held in right point by Dan Otten, Onreath. Vipers work it back up to the high slot. Now down to the corner, but it goes through everything and Foggergren unable to clear, didn't get all the mustard on that hot dog he wanted. Vipers working around the left circle. Now back down low. A shot or a pass return misses. It's taken away by Peterson. He'll rim it around. It comes to Foggerin, and now he will send it the length. It goes in on Engelbert. He's got to wait for some help to come back. Foggerin will be the first man to change up front for Reno. Out there on the kill is Vinisky with Roger Hutchison and Peterson and Gano. And then, whoa, missing a hit was... Hutchison, and he goes hard into the boards and bounces right back up. Mr. Indestructible bouncing. Puck goes through to the blue paint, and fortunately not across the goal line. Sent around the boards. Viper's still with it until an Ice Raider steps into him, and then it's cleared off of Jarvis. I beg your pardon, Horton, and players are tangled up on the goal line. That's Gano getting back into position for... A shot from the right side that might have hit the bodies in front. Not sure if Sam made the save. And now Sam makes the save. A big kick save. And the rebound comes right to the slot and cleared by Reno. Into the zone. Breckenridge save made by Sand. There's your lone wolf chop rod save of the game. On the boot. Peterson Wealth Management penalty kill. So Breckenridge able to hold the zone. Still on the attack. Puck comes up to the blue line for Cody Wilson into the slot. Five seconds to go on the PK and another save by Sand to settle things down. Mark that one down at 1540 of the second period on the PK. Justin Sand coming up big. Uh, yeah, CMK Pro Media, if we're going to have uh, figure skaters out, the last thing you want her to do is try to skate after all these guys heavy guys have been cut and rushed that she would hurt herself uh, or toe pick or worse so she gets fresh ice for the intermission Bobby Watson has it coming right out of the boxes Minton Watson had it knocked off of his blade another successful PWMPK and the Vipers have it in the neutral zone coming through with speed and Weston Nash taking the Vipers out with a hit. This will be icing, though, against Reno. The outlet pass misses. Face off to the right of Sand off of the icing. Watson gets it over to Lang for Tyrell. And now Barba. Barba's got to settle it down. His outlet goes to Sunday. Sunday's cross ice pass misses Lang. And the Vipers will clear it out only as far as center. Barba and Tyrell play catch with it. Tyrell try to get some lift underneath that and misses. Uh, backhand pass through the middle also misses. Vipers work it behind the net. Into the corner, Barba will not get it out. It's knocked down by Tyrell. It's a yard sale with gloves and sticks all over the place from the Vipers. And this might be a tripping penalty, and it is, against Reno in the offensive zone. Vipers skate it through the neutral zone. Bobby Watson with a whack on the hands. Play continues, poked away, but not with possession. So play continues. Puck goes into the corner, six on five, the extra attacker out. Puck is still loose and now finally touched up. There'll be a tripping penalty, and I believe it's on Watson, and I think Watson was trying to skate back to the bench and got tangled up with one of the Breck players accidentally on purpose, not sure. Was about to write down the penalty in the score, box, score sheet. Watson's still having a conversation. And Watson very calmly 
as a conversation so far. Let's see. Uh, that's the backup goalie, Shane Papage. Uh, is it on? Uh, Bobby Watson pleading his case to to Horton. Oh, Mickey's in the box. My bad. I did not see uh, Mickey enter the box. Slippery Mickey. So Mickey goes in for the trip. We were waiting to find out who it was on, and Mickey was already like, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Third uh, Pat Peterson Wealth Management penalty kill for the Ice Raiders. They are one for two on the kills thus far. Battenberg with it. Left circle, dishes it back. The Vipers cycle it, a shot from the left side, misses wide. Back to the right point. Slid across the blue line. Now back to the left circle, a cross ice pass. Comes right in front and a shot. Doesn't go in the net. I cannot wait to watch that replay as now we're gonna get an interference or a high stick against the Vipers. Interference is the call and that will even things out and all the EMTs have to leave the box and that's kind of funny. Trevor Jarvis making the call on number 77. Dan Onreef with the interference at 13.23. So the Ice Raiders will have a 45 second power play after a minute plus of four on four skating. Andrew Peterson's shot from the left side, saved by Engelbert. He left a juicy rebound, but Breck's able to come away with it. Four on four skating. Breckenridge off, no onside, I beg your pardon. And a save made by San. I was looking back at the linesman waiting for the call. And the shot came and San makes the glove save. Oh, he drags that leg, barely. Forty-six seconds to go on Mickey Lang's penalty. And with Mickey Lang, the player closest to the goalie, we'll see what happens when Lang's penalty expires. If he can get sprung on a breakaway. Jeff Geron for Nash, back for Geron. Touch pass into the neutral zone is taken away by the Vipers. Bailey across the line, trying to get around Geron and cannot. Jerron takes the puck away. Great defense there by Jeff Jerron. You can learn that defense. Oh, nearly deflected off Jerron though. And past Sand. And Reno will regroup. Right side, Pavel Pustavoy walks to the middle and his shot is steered away by Engelbert. It's a 40-second Brewers cabinet power play for Reno. Jerron deflects it for Lang. Lang cuts back against the grain, gets a shot on goal, actually off the side of the goal. And Reno still working a 30 second power play. Mickey Lang cuts to the middle, sit, shut, gets a shot away, deflected off of bodies in front. Reno finds the loose puck in the corner, gets it around for Sign. 10 seconds to go on the power play. Sign to the left point for Lang, looking for a redirect in front by, Le uh, by Nash and he couldn't get a stick on it. Uh, centering pass misses, and now this will be trouble for Reno. It's three on one with the man out of the box. A uh, shot off the side of the net. I saw Twine get tickled, but it was not on the inside, it was on the outside. So nothing doing on the second period power plays for either team. And we are nine minutes in with no goals in this second period. Weston Nash, a little crafty play to keep the puck away from the defender and still maintain possession at the same time. Raiders get it in deep. Now it's chipped up in the neutral zone. It's in the feet of Nash. Nash. 
little confused on how that play was offside. Uh, I guess because the, uh, yes, the Breck player entered the zone and there was a delayed offside call coming and then it was touched by the Vipers. Under 11 minutes to go in this second period. Uh-oh, whoops. The Vipers break it out cleanly, Nathan, across the blue line. And this play is offside again. Sorry if I forgot to mention, five shots on goal in that first period for the Vipers, 13 for Reno. Tony Tyrell into the zone, and his shot goes well wide left. So far in this period, three shots for the Raiders, and uh, all power play goal shots on net? Wow, that's uh, a lot. I can't tell how many because they're not broken up in fives. So I'll get you a head count on that in a second. Seven, so eight, seven shots on the power play for the Vipers on their one power play. Here's a shot on goal again from the left side by Tyrell. And that one is knocked down by Breckenridge. It's in the body of the Ice Raiders defense. Vipers work it behind the net. They try to walk it in front. And the Ice Raiders won't allow that. Bodies collide behind the net. Foggergren, he's hounded and is still able to get it. Up the boards to Hogue. That was Hutch who flipped it out of the zone and Hogue finished. Hutch takes a run at one of the Vipers. And then Hogue gets bodied by the equally sized Dan Onreith. Nearly equally sized. Nearly. Reno will dump it and go for a change. Outlet pass misses, rolls to Barba. Barba for Peterson. Peterson loses it to the Vipers who couldn't get a shot away because of Alex Gano's active stick. Cross ice pass misses. Minton now comes back to Gano. Gano comes in, curls, shoots, misses wide. Behind the net, Reno has it. Centering pass or actually a wing pass misses. And the Vipers will gain the zone, a shot is knocked down by Sand and not cleared by Reno. Now it is cleared, but knocked down in the neutral zone by Cody Wilson. Wilson a pest on this shift, his shot blockered away by Sand. And then getting his feet wrapped up, going hard into the boards, Jake Minton, he bounces right back up thankfully. It is hoisted over to the blue line and Reno will try to get a change on the play. They do as the Vipers dump it in. Tight checking game here. Five penalties total, and there's a collision in the crease. No arms up. Play continues. Vipers send it on goal, and it's well wide. It's gonna be held in just barely by inches at the blue line by Breckenridge. Taken away by Reno, though. Andrew Peterson will carry it behind the net. And make the safe play, looking for things, looking for the home run pass, and it lands on the stick of Garrity offside. Oh, what an outlet pass by Andrew Peterson. Stick to tape. Launching it 100 feet, but Garrity was offside on the play. Real quick, do you think these guys play lacrosse in the offseason? Because the way they pick off the puck in midair, just with the stick and at the velocity it's traveling, I mean, honestly, do you think they play lacrosse or anything like that? Uh, it's possible. And for as long as these guys have been playing hockey, because you're a baseball guy, this will make sense. It's like hitting a fastball. They, they can see the puck. They can, they've got the hand-eye coordination. They can make that puck lay flat from distance. It's really impressive what these guys can do. And that is a keen observation again by Chris Payne. 
Shot on goal from the right side goes off a Breck stick. Or a Reno stick, I beg your pardon. And now Jesse Vinisky. Vinisky looking for a corner and it's gloved by Engelbrecht. Eng I don't know why I keep calling him Engelbrecht. Sorry, JR. Engelbert. What's the Engelbrecht that I'm thinking of? Common German name. I don't know of any NHLers Engelbrecht or where I am picking that one up. My bad, JR. Rimmed around the boards. Vipers do not clear. Taken away by Reno right in front. A one-time try thwarted. Nice puck movement by the Ice Raiders. And Mickey Lang got what he wanted on the shot, but a Viper stick was right there to deflect it away. Bobby Watson putting it on a tee. But by putting it on the tee, that gave the Viper time to get that stick in the shooting lane. Good defense by the Vipers. Good look, though, by the Ice Raiders. Mickey Lang has it in the draw. Into the middle. A shot blocked. Kevin Sundy with the look. Two on one the other way. Jerron the lone man back. A shot scores. Riker Lynch, the righty coming down the left wing, puts it past Sand, and we are tied. He had the option to pass or shoot, and he shot for that right, right post, and Sand doing the splits, couldn't come up with the save. Beg your pardon, that was 79 Houlihan, not 19 Riker Lynch. Uh, 18, because I said 19, my bad. That was Cole Cavey with the helper. Call it 6.30, the time of the goal. Breckenridge coming right back on the right wing. Uh, stick save made by Sand. Puck into the right wing corner, held in at the our left wing corner, held in at the left point now. Tyrell sends it around for Barba. Barba skates it out of the zone. Nice moves by Barba. His shot gets blocked. And then another chance, and the puck was right there for the putback. And I don't think Barba was expecting it to land like a present on his stick. And then he takes it's a two for one. Barba shoves one Viper into another. And now Tyrell will chip it in deep and go after Engelbert. And instead of putting a snow shower on like that's pesky. San Diego Hornet, Tyrell will go back to the bench for a change. Under six minutes to go, second period. Only one goal this period, and that was by the Vipers moments ago at even strength. Face off to the right of Angle, Burt. Garrity pulls it back to the side, but it's taken away by Breckenridge. And skated up the right wing. Luke Noble chips it past the Reno defense. It's battled for behind the net. Now up to the half wall for Herrera. Herrera has it in his feet along with a couple of black jerseys. Trying to pitch fork it out was Minton. And he can't get it out. Vipers hold the zone. It goes cross corner. Sand will sweep it around the net precariously. Peterson will come away with it. Peterson getting hooked on the play. Peterson takes it right back, and then Peterson takes a hard shoulder into the boards. And let's see if the Ice Raiders respond with that. Peterson's a tough cookie, too. He's practicing his MMA when he's not on the ice. Turned over to Garrity. Garrity with a man in front and a redirect. And now Simon LeBlue is going to get a cross-checking penalty, maybe two, for the hit on Peterson. I wonder, Chu Chu LeBlu standing up for his teammate and co-owner. And we'll see how many penalties come out of this play. Cross-checking is the call, and Simon got his money's worth on that. Just want to make sure it's only one minor. 
two minutes for cross-checking. Today's game also brought to you by the NorCal Connection for all your packaging and labeling needs. 420, the time of the penalty. The fourth Peterson Wealth Management penalty kill. And they've given up one power play goal. The Ice Raiders have. Vipers have it behind the net and Sand finds the puck and covers it for a whistle. I don't know if you heard it or not, but when we announced the time of the penalty, there were a handful of woos out there. I did miss that. It's Nevada, all right. Well, Breckenridge probably the same way. Yes. Colorado, Washington, Nevada later. California. Anyway. Let's play hockey, man. Here are the Vipers with it. A shot from the left side. Goes wide. Now behind the net with a minute and a half to go. Still battled for Fished out of there and launched all the way down on the clear. Yes, the uh, Breckenridge goalie was in the trapezoid, but this trapezoid does not apply in this league when he played the puck. Forcing the issue up ice, Bobby Watson and Mickey Lang looking for some shorthanded fun. Breckenridge left side, a shot plug easily on the try by Mike Ivory. Okay, Mickey, are you okay? I suddenly, I've gone deaf on, or drunk. Oh, oh, a oh, smooth for that part. Annie, are you okay? Sorry, and a uh, glass breaker from Cody Wilson. And now the Vipers have it right in the slot, but a pass across denied by the Reno Sticks. Breckenridge still with control on the power play. Top of the left circle, now back to Wilson. Back to the left side with traffic in front and a save made and covered by Sand. Uh, I hope Annie is okay. Anne Marie dropping the puck for the first time here at a Reno Ice Raiders game. Miss Reno Rodeo 2024. She got to ride, Anne, Anne Marie, yeah. She got to ride the Zamboni. Now that Tony Tyrell welded a chair onto the Zamboni, Actually, I don't know if it was Tony. I believe it was his uh, partner in crime, Jason, that works at Lone Wolf Chop Rods. Lone Wolf's Chop Rods. So I guess Tony's not really a lone wolf if he's got help in Jason. Uh, shot gets blocked by Ice Raiders legs with 15 seconds to go on the PK. Vipers working around. Down low, now back up to the point. Left half wall, they got a man coming back door and they get a, they didn't get a shot on goal, I beg your pardon. From behind the net, they can't get a shot. And Minton changes with LeBlue. LeBlue would have been on the ice, but he went right to the bench for Minton. Minton ahead for Garrity. Garrity back to Minton, Minton shoots and it goes wide. Puck is in front of the Zamdor and carried out by Breck. Three on, four on three. Breck has numbers, but they flub the pass in the neutral zone. Peterson ahead for Pustavoy. Two on one with Hutch. Pustavoy right side. Pustavoy waits to Hutch. Save made by Engelbeck and then they score! Hutchison buries his own rebound. It was a two on one rush. Pustavoy waited, waited, waited. Dishes it over to Hutch. Hutch gets a hard shot on net, and the rebound came right to him, and he puts it home. It's 3-2, Reno. Andrew Peterson also with an apple on the play. And hopefully you're all going wild at Taste of Chicago, that goal song. 
brought to you by Taste of Chicago. Dang it. Jacob, I forgot to say he scars. Didn't see that one coming. Breckenridge coming right back on the attack. They whip it in front and it goes off the leg pad of Sand, who was down to block the play. Almost another home run pass looking for Pustavoy. The out pass misses Pustavoy. And now Alex Gano steps in front of a Viper to take the puck away. Vipers hold the zone though. No, they do not. It's taken away by Reno. And now outletted for Gano, but it rolls off of his stick and right to a Viper. 40 seconds to go in the period. In what has been a really good game. Right side, Breckenridge loses the handle. And it's cleared out to center, under 30 to play. Dumped in by Breck. Breck gets it in the corner. Now sent back around the net by Reno. 10 seconds to go in the period. Peterson, his pass misses Hogue, and this will be icing with a hair over five seconds to go. And we're gonna get a penalty on the play, or? Or no change, all right, so. Bobby Watson is having a conversation. No, they're fine, they're smiling uh, with Eli Kendall there. Yes, the arm up at center ice for the line changes, denying the change, can sometimes look like a penalty. And I, I heard a stick sound like a break. Five seconds to go in the period, and it's launched almost right onto Chris Payne's laptop, but it was five feet into the ice. I just saw that puck coming up towards us. So the Ice Raiders take a one goal lead into the locker room one more time. That was a dynamite goal by Roger Hutchison. Shots are 20 to 22, favoring the Vipers after that power play onslaught in the second period. 17 for the Vipers, 9 for Reno. The goals won a piece, 3 2, your intermission score. Are you looking to add an edge to your hockey game? Check out Battleborn Hockey School online at Battleborn HS. Battleborn Hockey School features Reno Ice Raiders players as coaches for adults only camps and implements on ice clinics, a power play skating clinic, and chalk talk to make you a complete player for all age groups. Registration for hockey school dates. Open school soon for schools in Reno Ice and also Utah and California. Well, the third period is coming up. Head to the fridge now. Get yourself an Ice Raiders Power Play IPA. We're going to go get one too. We'll be back with the third period coming up soon. We needed some extra help around the restaurant, so we hired some new staff. It's going good. Hey, Maddie, give me a few pucks, a side of sticks, and a cold one. Make it fast. Coming right up. Hey, can we get the baseball game on? No. It'd be a lot easier if you just drop the gloves. Oh, you want to go, buddy? I'm gonna need a Zamboni. Hey, can I get a water? Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Here you go, my man. I guess just like our beer, hockey is better on ice.
Battleborn Hockey School is back, the West's premier hockey camp for adults and kids. We're thrilled to announce the return of one of our most popular camps, Battleborn Hockey School's Power Skating Camp. This two-day program, designed for both adults and kids, is dedicated to enhancing your skating skills. From explosive starts to agile maneuvers, it's the perfect opportunity to gain the edge you've been seeking. And that's not all. We've added a new camp for 2024, Battleborn's Shooters and Scorers Camp. It's all about honing your finishing and goal scoring skills while elevating your hockey IQ. Whether you're a sharpshooter up front or a blue liner eyeing the net, this camp is your ticket to becoming an unstoppable scoring threat. For those that want the complete experience, our three-day Battleborn Adult Camp is for you. Geared for all levels, you'll undergo an intensive hockey skills improvement program led by coaches with over 100 years of combined professional and semi-pro hockey experience, covering everything from skating, shooting, positional awareness, in-game strategy, and tactics. You'll leave with a solid grasp of fundamental concepts and skills, enhancing your effectiveness as a hockey player. Engage in thoughtfully curated drills and exercises alongside your fellow campers. And just for our adult camp, a complimentary happy hour each day, providing an opportunity to connect with your coaches, teammates, and new friends. Every Battleborn Hockey School camp experience includes a personalized jersey, a detailed report card to track your progress, off-ice mobility sessions, and video analysis of your shot or stride depending on your camp. Ready to elevate your hockey game? Find our camps in California, Nevada, and Utah. Visit BattlebornHockeySchool.com to subscribe to our email newsletter for more details.
Joining me now is Andrew Peterson, the captain with one assist on the night. Talk about uh, that long outlet pass before the assist to Garrity in that set play. Yeah, yeah. You're actually wrong for there's two assists. Two assists, sorry. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I just tried to rifle it from behind the net. Everyone on the bench said it was onside, but I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I thought it was onside, but I was way back there. So. Pretty clean game tonight, considering what happened in Breck a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, this team doesn't want any of it. That's for, that's for sure. All right, Andrew, go get him in the third period. All right, thanks, Phil. <laughs> they don't want any of this. Second, no, third period. Interview brought to you by the Nest, purveyors of fine iconic cloning, clothing, thenestreno.com. The third period is underway, brought to you by the Brewers Cabinet. Head over to the Brewers Cabinet on game weekends for discounts on beer and merch. 3-2 your score. 20 minutes of hockey to go. And it should be quite exciting. Outlet passes, misses in the neutral zone, but somehow lands on the stick of Mickey Lang. He gets over to Watson. Watson from behind the net. His rim pass bounces past Lang, and Breck will get it ahead. Left side, now cut to the middle, and a shot save. Actually went off a stick of an ice raider. Sand caught a little bit out of position, clearing attempt. Knocked down by a Breck glove and a shot scored. Wow, that went in the net. Sand can't believe it. Nobody's really celebrating. Or what, I, did I not just see him pointing at? He was pointing at the face-off circle. Uh, oh, it went out of play. Okay, I beg your pardon. That was the most nonchalant. It was just the way emphatically that the official pointed at towards the direction of the net, but it was the face-off circle. That's why I was kind of confused why no one was celebrating. Scary moment there. Because I also lost sight of the puck. One and done for the Vipers on this possession. Jeff Duran off the boards. For Vinisky. he slips it over to Sign. Sign for LeBlue on side. LeBlue back to Sign. Sign's shot goes through the goal mouth and back to the point for Geron. Geron for LeBlue, who stood up for Peterson earlier. Petey can stand up for himself, not saying that, but Simon's going to make his presence known if you come after one of his guys. And now Garrity throws. Tries to throw a shoulder on Mike Ivory, and Ivory sidestepped that. Garrity got the worst of that in Chris Payne's living room. Taken away by Reno. LeBlue will send it in deep and go for a change. And then Garrity throws a shoulder again. Garrity, the wrecking ball today, goes after another Viper. Takes a cross check for his effort, efforts, and uh, now we are Oh, no, sorry. I saw two referee arms go up right in front of me. They were both calling the offside as the puck goes into the Viper bench. Fresh bodies over the boards for the Vipers. Battenberg will take the draw against Garrity, and they have been slashing at each other all night. Let's see what happens on this draw. Battenberg tries to lift the stake and then he slew foots Garrity. Trips him up right in the circle and Garrity's looking around for the arms. And now Garrity's looking for Battenberg. Garrity with a little love tap on the arm of Battenberg. Garrity takes it away on the turnover. Garrity gets it in deep. Garrity rides Ivory into the boards. Garrity gets it down low for Herrera goes past Julian. Julian wrapped up in the corner. It's a scrum down low. And now it's cleared up to the point for Barba. Right in front. Swept out of harm's way by the Vipers. And now Battenberg will bounce it past Sand. Sand will send it up the boards. Back checking on the play. Foggergren takes the puck away. Foggergren sent it right off of Slattery's hand. Fortunately, not the whistle hand. If you take a puck 
where the whistle is, that's got to hurt. If you've never seen a hockey whistle, it curls around the fingers. So that could have been metal on, puck on metal on finger, and that would not feel good. From behind the net, Peterson in his assist office. Oh, it looked like he was doing a little squat, like he was cocking up for launching a possible assist pass again. Yes, PD assisted on the Minton goal earlier. Here's Bobby Watson right side. He tries to send it in front and said he's got to go behind the net with it for Hutch. Now back into the right corner. Reno still with it, but now cleared by Breckenridge. Curling away from everything, Riker Lynch Cross-corner dump, intercepted by Gano. That long reach. Lang is ahead of the play. He can't, or he's calling, Beaver tapping for the puck. And a bad pass by Reno results in the turnover. Back checking Pustavoy, preventing a, a two-on-one. And all the Ice Raiders get back defensively on the play. Vipers will dump and peel back for a change. Shot from the left side with no offensive help by Breckenridge, steered away. Now sauced out of the zone, chased after by Lang. Picked up by Ivory. He gets it past Watson into the corner. A shot right on the goal line. And Sand has to cover that one. Almost five minutes gone by as the shot was on its way going through the crease. Hit something and stayed right there in the feet of sand. Face off one by Breckenridge's shot. Selling out and blocking the shot was Pustavoy. Pass misses Lang and this will go for icing against Reno. And Lang is arguing his case that he was ahead of the play. Or that the goalie came out. Yeah, I think Lang is arguing that the goalie came out to play it. And that should negate the icing. So the linesmen are talking it over with the official, or with Trevor Jarvis, I should say. Purdy says, my bad, and the faceoff will be in the center ice faceoff circle. And Purdy goes over and says to Lang, my bad, and Lang has a smile. That is good officiating by Purdy. And that's something that they taught us in the referee camp. If you make a mistake, own it. You will earn the respect of all the players and coaches when you communicate with everyone. And if you make an error, oh no, here's a clear cut. Brett, not clear cut, I beg your pardon. Eli Kendall cut through the defense. I think everyone thought the puck was gonna get away from him and it did not. Breck throws it in front, but Mickey Lang takes it away and carries it behind the net. Now Bobby Watson looks to get around a man and does, but lost the puck in the process. And coming in to help out again was Ivory. This is a puck rolling on edge, and this will be icing against the Vipers. <laughs> 17 shots on goal in that second period for the Vipers, nine for Reno. Oh, and we figured out the Engelbrecht an Engelbert mix-up. There is a Nevada softball player, Haley Engelbrecht, who, uh, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, had a walk-off home run in a game? Yes, she did, yeah. That's why I've got Engelbrecht on my sports mind, doing the public address for Nevada softball. That was a heck of a game. Couple of walk-off wins for the Wolfpack ladies. Hopefully I get to do more of those games and sit next to Tom Jekyll, watch some softball. A nice uh, relaxing sport after a winter of hockey. Turn, no, almost turned over to Reno. Yeah, oh, oh I, I can't even talk. It's going back and forth. Looked like Tyrell was gonna get a stick on that. Into the zone comes Jesse Vaniski. Drop pass for LeBlou. LeBlou carries it below the goal line. Now around the net, gets the feet moving. Spins it back for Vaniski, but intercepted momentarily by the Vipers. And then LeBlou had to lay off the hit of the Viper that turned his back. Didn't want to take another penalty in a one-goal game nearly halfway through the third. 
Bouncing puck comes out to the neutral zone. It's a two on one the other way. A shot kicked away by Justin Sand. A seemingly routine save and an important one late in the game. Julian Herrera tried his darndest to beat out the icing, but that was not going to happen. Trevor Jarvis motioning to the Reno bench saying, no, you cannot change. Nice try. Hunter sign. Under 13 to go, third period, brought to you by the Brewers Cabinet and TNT Yard Service tonight. Face off one cleanly by Reno. Behind the net, Peterson. Peterson's clearing goes off the boards and out of the zone, and so the forwards will get a change now. Turnover in the neutral zone for Garrity. Players onside. Garrity gets it over for Minton, and a shot Go, is sticked into the corner by Engelbert. Slid across the blue line from Peterson to Gano. Gano's shot. Might have gone off a stick or it went off the edge of the glove of Engelbert making the save. Minton will whip it around. Back for Peterson. Peterson a couple of moves. His pass to below the goal line missed. And now Gano makes a couple of stick handles in a phone booth in the circle and got it to the half wall, allowing Reno a chance to change. Poked away by Peterson. Play is still on side for the Vipers. Shot attempt blocked. Ahead for Pustavoy. Pustavoy into the zone. Curls away from pressure, dishes to Hutch. Hutch down low, a one-timer and a save made. Nathan Hogue with a great look. What a setup by Pustavoy and Hutch showing some chemistry. I almost want to call that the 15 foot line. 10 feet of Hogue and uh, do the math. Just over 11 to go, third period. Vipers trying to break it out and they do, but they turn it right over to Jerron. Jerron's outlet got knocked down. And the Vipers maintain possession in Reno's end. They work it into the corner. Now behind the net. Taken away by Hutch, and we get a stoppage. It was hit with a high stick. And now we're going to get penalties. Well, Roger Hutchison knocked the stick out of Ivory, and I wonder if they're both going to go. Yes, matching up minors here. So Hutchison with a slash and 13 with a rough. Sorry. Jim, if you ran the replay on that, I totally missed it. 10.57, the time of the penalties. Four on four. So they'll be out at 8.57. And I, and I can't repeat what Hutch is saying. enjoying the conversation here. It's all one-sided. And Eli Kendall's doing all he can to ignore Hutch. And won't give in. I think Andrew Peterson already said it. Breck wants nothing to do with Reno's extras in this game. And why would they? At this point, they're trailing one. Watson with a shot from the right side misses. Held in at the left point by Nash. Lang doing battle for the puck. Knocks it to another gray stick. Back for Lang, it goes through his feet. And now Nash winds, fires. 
And it goes behind the net. Mickey Lang a little slow to get up. Taken away by Reno. Watson got tied up on the play. Three on two the other way. Broken up by Jerron. Puck is loose and a shot is kicked into the corner by Sand. Uh, are we, we're still playing five on five? Oh, so they went back to five on five. My bad. I thought I saw four on four, but nope. All right, so 8.57 is when everyone's out. I didn't tell uh, our box keepers as Reno ices it with under halfway or under 10 minutes to go in the third period. Uh, let's see, Natasha wants to know the shot on goal count. In this period, four, four for Reno and three for the Vipers. So that evens things about 24, 25. Uh, favoring, let's see, that would be uh, Reno for the moment, I think. No, I've totally lost my math count, my bad. But three and four on this period. Mickey Lang on the outlet gets the zone. Watson back for Lang, and he fans on the one-timer who's just behind him. Tyrell and Barba, the defenseman back on the four-on-two rush by Breckenridge. They get a shot away, and it's well wide. Comes all the way out of the zone. Mickey Lang hustling after the loose puck. He gets to it. He works his way to the front of the net. He can't get a shot away. Good stick work by the Vipers defensively. And Lang is gassed after... An exhausting offensive rush attempt. Breckenridge gains the blue line. They've got it right side. And now poked away by Hunter Sign. And this play would be offside. Would have been offside if Breck had touched. But they get it right back. And then Tony Tyrell steps into Mike Ivory to separate him from the puck. Outlet for Vinisky. Goes back and forth and back and forth. Barba for Vinisky sends it back to the defense to regroup. 8.40 to go in the period. Tony Tyrell with it. Left wing. Back for LeBlou. LeBlou corrals it from his feet to his stick. His backhander is gloved easily by Engelbert. And everybody's out of the box. Boxes. Speedy, how did you forget about the game? Have you not hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to get alerts when we put out new content, like live games? Don't forget to do that, everyone. A one-time try by Garrity Fandon. A Viper might have got a stick on that as it came through the crease. I beg your pardon. Slot. Andrew Peterson sets up behind the net. He'll hand it off for Barba. Barba through the neutral zone. Has his stick whacked. And the Vipers cannot clear. It goes back to the left point, and Andrews Peterson will track it down. He'll curl away from a Viper. 19 on 19, Riker Lynch. And it's sent into the glove of Engelbert for a whistle. We don't, oh, we do play, do we play the Fort Worth Barracudas this year? I haven't looked that far ahead into March. Or the Mansfield Barracudas, I beg your pardon. Face off is won by the Vipers. Uh, yeah, we do finish the season against the Mansfield Barracudas. As Sam comes up big on that save. Puck comes back to the left point. Thrown on net, they got a man in front. A backhand try denied. Bodies everywhere, Sand without his stick. And somehow, oh, we are getting penalties behind the, uh, a penalty behind the play. And it's gonna be a holding call, I'm not sure. Horton was pointing at a pile of bodies. I'm wondering if it's on the Breck player for taking down Gano. And Gano's going to the bench. Two minutes for holding against Michael Houlihan.
And Horton trying to be as professional as possible, ignoring the barking from one of the Vipers on his way back to the box. So it's a Brewers cabinet power play for the Ice Raiders. It is their third attempt. They have one goal so far. They have it, possession of it. Jerron, he sends it on net. Save made by Engelbert. Puck loose behind the net and played up the boards. And now out by the Vipers. Weston Nash on the regroup, being pressured by Mike Ivory. Gets it to Lang. Lang cross ice for Gano. I beg your pardon, Sunday. But Sunday was offside and now finally cleared and almost threading the needle and getting a breakaway was Mitch Bailey. Behind the net, Nash is wrapped up. Nash is still able to get it. To Jerron for Watson. Watson across the line. Watson left side. He tries to go upstairs short side. Instead, he gets nothing but the protective netting outside. And it looks like they, yeah, they are going to have to come for a buck. Tense moments here, six minutes plus to go, a minute of power play time for the Ice Raiders. And Rich Battenberg, Rick Battenberg, surprised isn't getting a delay game here. For being on the wrong side, Garrity with a shove, saying just come on, let's go, drop the puck. And depending on how this game goes, watch for those two to dance. Puck is in the legs of Garrity. Garrity gets it down low from behind the net. The Ice Raiders with it. And then being knocked down on the play and then all was one of the Ice Raiders holding the zone. No, not holding the zone. Herrera couldn't do it. And now we do get a penalty behind the play for a high stick. A minor for high stick on Peterson. Well, it was well before Jim was able to get the replay going. And Peterson can't believe it. High sticking at 557. So that will negate the Ice Raiders power play. And in 34 seconds, Breckenridge will go to work on their fifth power play. A shot from the left side and a save made. Garrity with the chance. Still trying to pick up where Peterson is in all this. So that was the holding, that was a while ago. Trying to get caught up on the stream and uh, also watch when that play happened. Oh, a chance for Lang! He couldn't get a shot away. And now uh, Rister got blocked by bodies in front. Four on four skating for another 10 seconds. Vipers get it into the attacking zone. A uh, shot is gloved by Sand. Face off coming up to the right of Sand. So Peterson's being harassed on the side and then something came up on the Viper player, unable to tell if it was a stick or an elbow or even the Vipers player himself. And it might have been the Vi another Viper player's stick. 
I don't think Andrew Peterson is throwing elbows from behind like that. A minute of penalty kill time for Reno and a vital one here. As now, oh, nearly getting a breakaway. Now they will get a breakaway. It's a 2 0. Watson and Lang. Lang, Watson, Watson misses the one timer. He was falling on the play, he had to reach behind him. Watson gets it back though behind the net. And now it is lifted up and out of the zone on the outlet for Mike Ivory. What a look for Watson and Lang. And they got smiles coming back to the bench as Sand loves this one easily. Face off to the left of Sand with 4.30 to go. Uh, Rister goes over the glove of Sand. And Reno is able to clear. 26 seconds to go on Peterson's penalty. Quiet crowd here. And hopefully they'll let out a roar in 11 seconds when they kill this penalty. Five seconds to go. Vipers still have it along the blue line. A one-timer from a sharp angle is wide. And now Peterson lets it go for Garrity because there was already two defense out. Peterson had to go to the bench. And I think Garrity might have lost sight of the puck for a half second. Turned over by Breckenridge. Puck lifted into the neutral zone. Julian Herrera doing battle with a uh, Viper. Garrett Bailey gets it in deep. They get it across, and now it's cleared out, though, by Reno. Tree 30 to go in the third period. And a tree 2 lead for the Ice Raiders. Vipers coming back through the neutral zone quickly. Keep an eye, keep an eye on that netminder with three minutes to go. Reno's able to take it away, get a clear, and this will go on net. Engelbert has to play it. And then it's turned right over. A chance and a save made on the try on the takeaway by Jake Minton. Now the Vipers counter across the red line. Taken away by Alex Gano. At the blue line, stolen right back by the Vipers. And now Bobby Watson takes it away. Watson has a step on the D. Watson in. Save made by Engelbert. No penalties on the play. Uh, another clean look. And now Peterson's wrister is blockered into the corner with two and a half to play. Bobby Watson snake bit tonight. Watson calling for a change on the play. Sign jumps in. And it's... Loose in the slot, blocking the shot attempt was Sunday. Behind the net, taken away by Reno. Two minutes to go in the game. Engelbert still in his net. Cross ice for Sign. Sign leaves it for Sunday into the middle for LeBlu, whose shot is smothered by Engelbert. One fifty to go, and uh, there's a motion on the Vipers bench for a timeout, and they are going to get called their timeout. Shots on goal in the period, Vipers with six, Reno with 12. So that's 32 shots for Reno in the game and 28 for the Vipers. <laughs> Tense moments here again in Reno. Who comes in next week, Chris? The Sun Valley Suns, but we still got one more against 
these Vipers tomorrow. Face off one cleanly by Reno Duran. His shot is blockered away by Engelbert. Long clearing attempt knocked down. Engelbert is on the top of his crease. Crouched like he's ready to start skating. And he's got to wait for the Vipers to gain clean possession. He's dancing into the slot. And now this play is off someone on the bench of Reno and this faceoff will come outside the zone. Eighty-four seconds to go from another Reno home victory. Johnny Garrity will take the draw against his arch nemesis of the night. Battenberg, and Battenberg pulls it back clean. But he pulled it back too clean. Vipers have to start the breakout and go 200 feet. And now Engelbert will follow the play and go to the bench. Vipers get it in deep on Reno. They carry it around the net. The extra attacker is out. Net empty. Thrown in front, but cleared out by Reno. And up to the half wall. Garrity for Herrera. And the Vipers get it into Reno's end. Garrity goes for the empty net, and it's knocked down at the blue line. 43 seconds to go. Vipers gain the zone. They try to get it to the middle. They cannot. Around the defense of Alex Gano. Gano being hounded by black jerseys. Comes up the half wall. Gano tries to skate it up and out but only as far as the blue line, and now the puck will get over the blue line. Gano kicks it to escape. Gano from the blue line, just misses the right post. Oh my, missing it by inches. And now the captain Battenberg has it knocked out of his stick. Reno will play it off the boards with seven seconds to go. Bobby Watson knocks it down. Watson makes a stick move, he gets held on the play. He won't get a shot away, it won't matter. The game is over. The Reno Ice Raiders hang on and win this game three to two. Presented by TNT Art Service. Woo! Presented by LT Automotive, your three stars of the game. So no goals in that third period. our number one star of the game. Final shots on goal, Ice Raiders with 32, Vipers 28, and face-offs even two. Shoshana Granite's got them, 29 wins for the Vipers, 31 for Reno. the group photo with Miss Serena Rodeo will chat with Andrew Peterson. Honorable mention goes to Houlihan of the 
Breckenridge Vipers for a solid effort. By all means, advise them to do so. Or join Indian model across the street where your arena live streamers here show up before the game and you can have a chance to win a pair of tickets for tomorrow night's game. Working our way back to center ice. And Andrew Peterson, this is your game puck, dude. Number one star of the game for a solid defensive effort and a couple of helpers. Gritty win by your Ice Raiders tonight. Yeah, I, I thought we, we were pretty okay in the first, but the second and third, we were kind of like lackadaisical. So I kind of, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was pretty easy to see, but we need to have play a full three period tomorrow. Yeah. It's a little, little slouchy type hockey. So, so uh, be a, uh, unpack that a little more. A little more energy, sloppy passes. Like, what, what did you see that maybe the casual fan didn't? Yeah, I just thought we weren't uh, like hard on pucks. Um, they were beating us to pucks all over the ice, especially in our D zone. Um, and the D kind of needed a little bit more help in the D zone too. The forwards were kind of floating in the in the neutral zone. But you know, if we can hit them, we can hit them. But we have to get it out first. So yeah, just pretty common like hockey thing though, where we just we want to score goals, but we need to take care of home base first. So. Adam Barber and I had a long chat about that earlier in the season, especially getting into the Battleborn Hockey Camp, that the forwards need to come down low and support support the breakouts. And is that also why you were looking for Garrity on that home run pass that I keep going back to? Yeah, totally. Like that, even that one too. Like perfect example. Like if he was closer to me, I probably could, yeah probably could have got it to him the, yeah in a better fashion. But I just tried to rip it, and I mean he was at the far blue. So I mean yeah, not like a typical hockey breakout, but. Uh, it happened 32 shots on net from the Ice Raiders. Engelbert coming up big again. Uh, he stonewalled you guys in Breck, but you had his number tonight. Did you see anything different from the Vipers goalie tonight? No, not really. I mean, he was pretty solid up in Breck, and he was solid tonight. But again, I don't think we, like, tested him too much tonight. We had, like, kind of perimeter shots, but we just need to get in his face more and get more bodies in front and really, like, get those rebounds because he'll, he'll spit up rebounds if they're there. So just for it tomorrow a little bit more. Big goalies tend to give up big rebounds, right? It's true, it's true. It happens, this is part of the deal. So. All right, Andrew, great job tonight. Go back to the boys and we'll see you again tomorrow. Cool, thanks so much, Phil. Appreciate it. Love you, buddy. All right, our final interview with Andrew Peterson for the night, brought to you by the Nest, purveyors of iconic vintage home decor and clothing. This amazing jacket, the hat's mine, but the tie, the tie is super cool. I don't know if Jim's uh, gonna be able to get a full shot of that. It's like, it's like dudes on horses shooting arrows at goats or something. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm watching the screen here. Yeah, it's it's super mythical. I have no idea what this pattern means, but it's rad and it's warm. And thank you, the nest, for everything. All right. Well, we're gonna shut this one down pretty quick because tomorrow. Our statistician Shoshana Granite is leading a Pilates class for the WAGs, the wives and girlfriends of the Ice Raiders players. And Justice Chiori is going to go get a stretch there as well. So we got to pack this up and get out of here. For our public address announcer, Chris Payne, our statisticians Shoshana Granite and Tom Jekyll, our timekeeper, Jacob Fillion, and of course, our amazing technical director, Jim Dunnigan. I'm Philip Goodman signing off tomorrow, 7.50 on our 8 o'clock puck drop, round four. The Ice Raiders try to even out the season series. Ice Raiders win 3-2, presented by TNTYardService.com. Good night, everyone.